Oh God, am I on? All right. So um, let me just invite people here. Hello, everyone. Uh, Tim Manley here. Um, haven't been on the Facebook Live or YouTube for a while. So uh, a lot of you know that I have uh, yesterday I purchased. Uh, this is kind of like a confession video. So I uh, purchased this thing right here. Uh, how do I show it here? Yes. So. Um, so I uh, purchased a uh, Canon R5, and a lot of you knew that I switched from Canon to Nikon uh, about three years ago. And um, and and to be honest, um, I haven't been uh, I haven't been looking into camera upgrades for uh, quite many years, actually, uh, for three years at least. Um, I kind of stay completely away from all the mirrorless and and all the stuff, and I was just focused focused on my own photography. Right, that's the most important thing. And so, my heart was as calm as a lake without wind for three years. And um, <laughs> and and I was I was able to take some good photos for Nikon and everything until a few days ago. So I went out with my good friend uh, Don um, uh, to 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 do some photography, and I was using my uh, Canon. No, <laughs> I'm already talking about Canon. I was using my Nikon D850 and the two, uh, 400 2.8, and uh, and my friend Don, he was uh, he just got the uh, the the. Oh, I should do this to to make more people to join, right? <laughs> uh, so my friend was using the um, uh, this this Canon R5 with his uh, 400 2.8. And at first, I thought, like, look at this thing. Right? It's, it's just a tiny thing, and I kind of looked down on that. <laughs> you know, we all want the, the big things, right? So I didn't even pay attention. And he said, hey, Tin Man, uh, why don't you just kind of pick it up and, and try it? It's pretty good. So, um, so, I, 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 so I put down my uh, Nikon, and then I uh, hold his camera and lens up. And I don't know if you guys have that experience, right? Um, Sometimes when you go into um, like in your kitchen, right, and you try to hold, uh, pick up the uh, the the like the one gallon or whatever water bottle, and when you pick it up, you realize that it's actually empty, and you kind of uh, uh, over like over pull the the thing. It was so light, and that feeling was exactly like how when I pick up his uh, Canon R five with the 402.8 I basically just like pick it up and then almost threw it away because it was so lightweight and I was like oh my that thing that that set up the Canon with the 402.8 is was literally at least four pounds lighter than my uh, Nikon D850 with the 402.8 and so so this is my uh, Nikon right here so uh, and then this is <laughs> the the Canon so look at that Look at that that difference, and I mean it's not a fair comparison because I didn't really put on the uh, battery pack. I I didn't buy it because <laughs> I want to save it. But but this thing is just so lightweight, and this one is like a brick, right? And um, with the four hundred two point eight, um, Canon's uh, and Sony has the much lighter four hundred two point eight, and uh, and I do a lot of uh, handheld handheld photography, and any one pound or even one ounce of saving kind of, uh, you know, it goes a long way. So that was a huge uh, game changer. So I was talking to Don and he said, yeah, why don't you try it? Like, 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 look at that. There's a bird right there. Why don't you just try to focus on that? And, uh, and he set up the, the eye focus thing, right? So I, I, I aimed the, the, his R5 uh, in the viewfinder to the, to the bird. And, and that, I don't even know what that bird is. Was it a blue jay or something? So the blue jay was on the branch, right? And so I was focusing on that. And, um, you know, I was more familiar with the optical uh, viewfinder. So I, it's still kind of taking a, a, a feeling to, uh, yeah, right? it's like toy. it still took me a little bit to adapt to that uh, electronic viewfinder. But what happened next really shocked me. So um, so the with the eye focus, right, the uh, the, ca the camera was able to lock onto the head of the bird. And you know, for birds in flight, what is some of the most challenging thing to capture is when the bird take, take off, right? Takes off, what, what happens is that when the bird take off, it usually flaps the wing. <laughs> flap the wings and then it just jump up, right? And a lot of the time uh, with traditional, like, 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 
bricks like this one, uh, it is very difficult for our reaction time to catch the moment when the bird jumps up because of the sudden change of the, the position, right? So a lot of the time in the first second, we might lose the focus a little bit. And then with our skill, as we get better, we were able to track the focus, right? But with this little toy right here, that I focused was able to track the whole bird, like from starting on the perch to jump off to fly it was locking in the whole time i looked at the bird it was flying like assume this is the viewfinder right I, at first it was in the middle and the bird took off like this and fly away the whole time um, the focus was right on the head so literally uh, you, you don't lose the focus at all and i was like wow this, I mean, a lot of you might have known that it's a huge difference. It's a game changer, basically, because um, for me, a lot of the time when I take photos, I would move the, the focusing point. I do the, the joystick, like this thing right here, this joystick to move the focusing point a lot to uh, compose so that I, tr I I would try to minimize the cropping of the camera, uh, the, the, the photo to save the pixels, basically. right? But with, with the eye focus, literally, you can compose any, anywhere you want as long as the eye focus was on the bird and so uh, I'm all for so I'm super lazy <laughs> so I'm super lazy and anything that can help me to save my technical side uh, uh, to lock the focus of the bird and do the composition or whatever I would try to be lazy so that I would let my mind to be freed to focus on the creativity the creative side right? we all want to be less focus on like oh, what 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 the heck is that should this be of ISO or whatever right you want those to be put aside and focus on that and with this one I think it will really help me with that so uh, after I tried it for uh, for a few minutes um, I I was looking around and I said hmm uh, this may be interesting because I'm I'm probably going to a road trip uh, in the next few weeks right so I I um, I was starting to uh, look, ar look around and then I went to uh, Pause Photo, which is um, near where I live and, uh, yesterday. And uh, I talked to Mark, uh, 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 who, who works there, and, and <laughs> that's what happened. So that's what happened. And then uh, I was thinking about, okay, I'll get this camera and then maybe a 600 millimeter. Um, but turn out, so I asked the, uh, Mark, like, hey, do you guys have a 600? And he said, oh, yeah, of course. And then I went there and he said, like, look at that. This is the, the 600. And I look at that and he said, no. <laughs> so it turned out he thought I was thinking about buying the 600 F11. And I said, no, no, that's not the lens I wanted to buy. And the 600 is out of stock. And right before I went to, uh, to that store, uh, I was talking to Trent. And uh, Trent told me that, hey, Din man, you should try out that 100 to 500. You know, it's really sharp. And uh, I just, I just don't like this peer, <laughs> peer pressure. Not, not really peer pressure, but once you know that it is good, it, you got curious. So I went to the store, and guess what? I also bought this freaking thing right here. So this is the. Um, <laughs> so I got this one. So I haven't even opened it. Uh, I was so tired after the driving and stuff. So uh, so why don't we just do a unboxing, right? That's what they call. So this is the um, the RF one hundred to five hundred. I already oops. I already took out the the R five. So I mean, there's nothing much in the box except the uh, uh, I mean, the batteries and and the charger. I couldn't even get the um, the uh, what is that? The adapter, the uh, the EF adapter. I think is out of stock everywhere. So anyway, so let's 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 do the unboxing, right? <laughs> Got it. I'm completely new to this kind of thing. So okay, I should just do this, do this, and uh, I, this thing. And just put it down, and um, let's see what's in there. Okay, so so this is uh, this is the lens. Okay, so this is uh, what it is, and uh, let's see. Okay, so there's the the strap, and uh, okay. Oh. <laughs> so this is the strap, and um, so this is the lens. Uh, looks like it's new. <laughs> Okay, so this is the um, the hood and the lens. Oh wow, it's it's super light. So that's um, that's the lens right here. 
it's, it's beautiful. Look at that. Say, it's pretty good, right? And uh, that's the hood. And I think it is, it's just really lightweight. And how, how is that focused? Okay, so it's a, a uh, so it's not a push pull, but it, it is something like this. And uh, 100 to 500. Can you believe that? So that's, uh, so you get 500. F7.1 though, kind of sucks. Uh, we'll see how, how it goes and the tripod color and stuff like that. So, and then this is the hood. Let's just take a look. I think this is like the first unboxing video that I've ever done. I think the last one was uh, Federico's uh, book. <laughs> so maybe I should really, um, really do, do, do stuff like that. Um, okay, so here it is. Uh, it's uh, pretty good. So there's uh, stuff like that. I forgot the use of that one. I think Chas actually one time told me about the the, the, the little window here. <laughs> the, <laughs> I forgot the, uh, uh, well, well, dropping stuff is my specialty, Bob. So anyway, so this is, um, so that's it. And then you attach it to the camera and then you're good to go. So so that's the, the stuff. But what I want to let you guys know is, uh, which is I have a few points to talk about actually. I, I actually plan it. So um, uh, somebody asked me, are you gonna switch to Ni uh, from Nikon to Canon? I don't know yet. Um, so I still have my Nikon gear and actually Nikon has been very good for me. And uh, some of you may not know the reason why I switched from Canon to Nikon before. It was because there was something about Canon before that <clears throat> the autofocus of Nikon seems to be more accurate. So. The autofocus of Canon is very fast, but what I find out is that uh, it sometimes would overshoot. Like when you try to lock focus on something, it, it will be faster than Nikon, but sometimes it overshoot a little bit and then it comes back and then they do this kind of vibration. So so some what I find out is that for some crazy action, you might not get very consistent results. But Nikon, even though it's a little bit slower in the autofocus, but it's always very accurate. So that is the one thing I like about Nikon. The second thing I like about Nikon was the dynamic range. Back in the days when the DA50 just came out, uh, if you shoot it at below ISO 1600, the uh, dynamic range is just really spectacular. And I did get quite a lot of um, good photos uh, from that. But what I didn't know about Nikon was, uh, so I was in Kenya. I was uh, photographing some elephants, right? And it w that that evening we were, we had some backlit elephant there, but it was pretty far away. And I wanted to get some really close up so that I can get an intimate look of like the 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 bathing. Is it called a bathing? Like they splash the sand bathing of the elephant with the with the, uh, the trunk with with the sand and everything, like taking a bath with the backlit, right? And I set up a two x converter on my. Uh, 400 I think or 600 I forgot but um, the whole time you know the whole time uh, the focus was hunting back and forth and uh, and and at, an, at a certain point of the time it completely stopped so the autofocus was stopped and and you know that helpless feeling right I kept on shooting because I kept on pressing the, the the shutter but it just wouldn't lock focus and I missed a lot of the shots because of that and that didn't happen just once it actually happened quite a few times and uh I don't know about you, but I actually used 2x converter on my Canon a lot before. And without the 2x capability, I am just not too comfortable uh, moving forward uh, with Nikon. Although I did hear some somebody say that the Z7 Mark II is very good in the teleconverter thing, but uh, but that really concerns me. And then later, I had heard that for Canon, the 1DX Mark III and the R5 actually they improve a lot on the autofocus. It's like night and day, I heard. And so I suspected that they might have already solved that original problem that I was mentioning to you about. So, so that's why I decided to, uh, to give it a try. And then you may say, Tin Man, why don't you wait for the um, Sony A9 Mark III, right? And indeed, I was, I was always planning to uh, get the A, uh, A9 Mark III uh, because what I heard is that it has 50 megapixel with uh, uh, like uh, autofocus faster than the Canon, right? And um, so, uh, and also like Sony might have, I, it's just a guess that Sony probably would have the largest uh, budget for uh, research and development, right? Because it's a huge company, right? So, so 
I think they they were already the pioneer for image sensor development. So so naturally, uh, Sony would be a very good choice. But on the other hand, I also heard a lot about uh, people didn't like the the manual uh, in in Sony and also the control. So uh, this is another thing that I really point want to point to you guys. So even though I really like the uh, the Nikon for many uh, for the last three years, but you know after you spend a lot of years. In one camera system, uh, what happened is that um, you you develop something that is more than the science, more than just the control of it. It's almost like when you do the uh, driving, like if you race car, if you do the stick shift and stuff like that. After a while, you you kind of like you 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 become one <laughs> with the the vehicle, like all, all this, or or maybe piano or violin, or all, all these kind of things. So for Canon, I've used it for more than 10 years. So the way I lock focus and, and all these kind of things, it's, it's like the feel that you develop for a long time. You kind of know exactly when it's going to lock focus, when it's losing focus and all these things. But for Nikon, I, I just couldn't get that feel after three years, two or three years. And so I'm pretty excited to get back to um, Canon. And, um, and also, I mean, I, I confess that... Um, I mean, like, I agree with a lot of people that camera don't make you a better photographer. Uh, and indeed, I mean, I have, I really, like most of the photos I took uh, before was, I was using APS-C sensor. I was using older version of the lenses and all. But at the same time, uh, I focus a lot on taking low light action photography. And Anytime when you can gain some uh, ISO performance, for example, I heard that uh, from my friend Potique that the R5 has one third of a stop uh, better performance than DA50, meaning that at ISO 1600 um, uh, for the, um, how do I say it? So uh, at ISO 2000, if the R5, the image quality, the noise will be the same as uh, uh, for Nikon with ISO 1600. So that, can be huge too. So that that is another reason that I really uh, want to give it a try. Uh, when the when the Sony comes out, I may still still try it. But uh, but so so right now this is this is what what I what I want to share with you, and I'll I'll keep you guys updated about uh, uh, how I feel about this camera. Uh, I mean this this lightweight uh, camera and lenses, and uh, and guess what? So I went to the uh, the camera store, and guess what? I what else I bought? So I bought. Um, I'm just gonna pick out the. Uh, you know, you you never. It's like you go to you go to groceries, right? You never come back with just one thing. So um, so I I got the um, the CFE. Uh, reader. Uh, so, so what? What I heard is that so this is the new new thing the uh, the CFE five twelve gigabyte card. Uh, it's just crazy right nowadays. Uh, you actually have five twelve gigabyte. I still remember in twenty oh one. Who who took who started to take uh, digital photography in twenty oh one? I did, and I got my first. Uh, card which was called the micro drive card and it's a one gigabyte drive uh, micro drive card and it's 499 dollars and it has one gigabyte and look at that now 512 so it's just crazy so i got two of those that cost me a, a grand God. and then i bought a bunch of this uh, uh camera like body cap and stuff like that because I, I tend to lose a lot of those in, in the field and i highly recommend you guys to get a ton of those so so with that said that's um that's what I want to share with you guys. I'm I'm quite excited uh, with with this thing. Again, I mean, photography wise, uh, probably might not improve on on my photography, but uh, it, it's just so much fun. And I think uh, with the like this deep learning, artificial intelligence of the eye focus is is just uh, we are very lucky uh, as bird and wildlife photographer to witness this kind of uh, change, this kind of. Uh, uh, forefronts moving forward right, to, on the technology. So it, it's good to, to try it out. Uh, and that's that it is very easy to go broke. So all right, so I'll, I'll see you guys. Uh, oh yeah, so uh, so later. So thanks for, for, for correcting. I didn't see your name though, but so uh, I, so the, this this right thing right here, right? Uh, uh, this little window, <laughs> uh, what you do is if you have a uh, polarizer in, in, uh, in there, then you can stick your finger in and then you kind of rotate it to, to change it. So uh, what else is, uh, maybe we can also become more creative to think about what else we can do about it. 
The other thing is you can put your finger in and put your some fingerprint there. <laughs> All right. So um, with that said, um, hope you guys enjoy this talk, and I'll keep you guys updated uh, for my first photos of the the, the Canon R5. All right. Okay. Talk to you guys soon.